Okay, my name is Eddie Burton. I joined the Ford Company in July of 1969. I'm Dan Tabler and I have 73 years of service in the Goodwill Fire Company. Hi, I'm Donald Dawkins, a member of Goodwill Fire Company for 61 years. My name is Ralph Starkey. I've been an active member of the Goodwill Fire Company for 62 years. My name is Butch Kaufman and I have 46 years with Goodwill Fire Company. My name is Jerry Wallace. I came into the Goodwill Fire Company in 1957. I now have 62 years of service. At home, I have hanging on the wall. I was firefighter of the year for three years. I have a certificate from the president, the president's award, and I also have a board director's award. Hall of Fame for Kent and Queen Anne's a Hall of Fame for Eastern Shore, and also a Hall of Fame for Delmarva that I just recently got here in the last two years. Very proud of those, very proud. Awards I've got, I've got Kent and Queen Anne Farmers Association Hall of Fame. I've got the Eastern Shore Hall of Fame, Delmarva Hall of Fame, those three. And I, I got one from uh, the governor for 50 years of service. And that's all I've gotten except the little awards that we got from the company. Maryland State Fireman's Hall of Fame, I was named to that a few years back, and the Kent Queen Anne's Association Hall of Fame, which was very nice to be recognized. I think I did get a citation from the governor recently for my uh, years of service, and the uh, fire company itself handed me a big, nice plaque for my seven years of service. been elected in the Hall of Fame of the Kent Queen Anne Association, the Eastern Shore Farm Association, the Delmarva Farm Association, and the Maryland State Farmers Association. I've been elected into the Delmarva Historical Hall of Fame for firefighters on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Um, citations from the governor, representative to the to U.S. Congress, serving as treasurer of the Goodwill Fire Company for 34 years. Started out years ago when nobody knew that how that went. Most of us always ran for director to start with, which is a big, one of the biggest jobs of the company. But I did, I started out as a director moved on up to vice president, president, and then chief. Also on in the bar fighting end, I started out as just a farmer, an engineer, lieutenant, captain, assistant chief, chief. Some of the history of what I have done, I have been president of the company on three different occasions. I've been vice president three different occasions. I've held the office of secretary, board directors, and treasurer. I was also line officer one time. I was a lieutenant. Started out when I was living right across the street. That's I got married in June and. I joined the company a couple months later and I was able to get to the farmhouse, but I, I became secretary shortly thereafter. 
Uh, then I went to vice president for a couple years and president and it, when we had the Delmarva Convention here and I think it was uh, 69, something like that. And then uh, in 72, I was elected to chief for 11 years. And then I uh, moved away for a couple of years. Uh, then I had heart, open heart surgery. And then I got back and got active again. I became secretary again. Then I was the EMS treasurer. And I've been, I've been elected a little over 39 years in positions in this company. I've, I've been very fortunate. I, I didn't, uh, never made chief. I was assistant chief for a while, and but I've been <laughs> secretary most of the offices I've held uh, since I knew how to write. <laughs> I ended up being secretary most of the time. Over the 61 years I've served, uh, it's about all of the. Um, administrative offices. Um, I've been president, uh, vice president, uh, on the board of directors several times, uh, and as I said before, treasurer for 30, 34 years. I was a firefighter for many years and uh, was an engineer who drove the trucks and so forth, and uh, also rode the ambulance um, on occasion. Vice president. I've had secretary, I've had treasurer, and also uh, board directors I've had for several years. Engineer I've been uh, for close to 40 years, if not more. And I also have had chief engineer. In these 50 years, it has been very active. I've seen some good times in here, and I've seen some bad times on calls that really stick with you and you remember. Well, one call that I remember was a, a house fire, and we had gone inside, and they always, the training told us, if you get caught in the fire or you get caught in a flashover, use your hose and reverse yourself and follow your hose out the door. I was inside, myself and another guy that used to be chief here and we had a flashover and the fire rolled over the ceiling in back of us and we had to use the hose line as a safety line in order to find our way out the door to get out. I remember that one very much, yes sir. I had a couple instances um, as an ambulance attendant. Um, <clears throat> One of them was, uh, we had a, had a lady who was uh, expecting a baby and it was a snowstorm. Uh, nobody could get anywhere. And my neighbor and I came to the far house and got the ambulance out with a, a Jeep four wheel drive to open the path for us to travel. We went out of town and picked the lady up, got her to Easton Hospital and she had the baby 20 minutes after we arrived. Some of those trips we had to go to Kent Island and Kent Nares to cover a fire in the middle of the winter. Boy, riding the back of those trucks there was cold. I mean, you can't ride the back of a truck anymore. You have to be inside. Not allowed to ride the back step. But we sure rode them back then in those days. Yeah, we went up, up uh, north of Centerville on uh, 213 to Mr. Reinhold's farm, and he had a large chicken house that he that would caught a fire and this was winter time and it was blowing a gale out there. And when we got done uh, fighting that fire and on our way back, our turnout gear, especially the, the coach, would stand alone. They all were frozen so bad with the ice and the water was on there. It was, it was, it was really, I think it was about zero or something like that that day going up there. It was very cold on the back of that truck, <laughs> I can tell you that. Well, I can remember uh, driving a the open cab fire truck to a house fire in the middle of winter, and it was snowing, cold as the death. And had, that was from here to Roosburg. Now that was a cold ride for me, but that was the year that I was an engineer, and just so happened I had the open cab on that particular fire.
Some years ago, there was a storage building behind the old Acme here in town. A lot of people would have known. It was the Board of Education storage uh, building. Um, they had a fire in there. Uh, I was working at the time when the call come in. I did have a monitor in this truck so I could hear some calls. And I heard, I heard that it was all kinds of tones and it must have been something big. So I took the county truck and I went in town, no way of notifying boss other than on the radio, and I didn't have one. And when I went in there, here was a truck sitting very close to the building, not a soul around it. Uh, the firefighters and the operators, I guess was a, an officer, that uh, just walked away and left the truck running. Of course, it was supplying water to the people that were either in the building or around it. I hadn't been there long before the chief stuck his head around a corner and he said, he seen me, he said, can you take care of that truck? I said, yes, sir. And he was gone. I didn't have any gear, didn't come to the far house to have any gear. And he no more was gone. And I noticed that the overhead doors were melting from all the heat. Those doors no more hit the ground before uh, spray cans of paint started coming out of those doors. I had to get underneath the truck to keep from getting hit by these uh, spray cans that were overheated in this building. I got, got the air breathing apparatus and took the hose with a, with a partner. We went into the store. Uh, we got so far, and now I must admit, I didn't have enough training or enough nerve, I guess, to do my job, and that bothered me. So uh, with that, uh, I started from that point on to make sure that uh, we were gonna get some training, and that's one reason why I got elected to the Maryland State Farm Association Hall of Fame is that uh, I was on a committee, a training committee, and we ended up getting satellites all over the state. And we had one here in Centerville. We started out in this far house uh, with, a, with a guy coming out of College Park at, from the Maryland uh, Far Institute. And uh, then we ended up, he, we got a full-time person here, and we ended up having a school down in Cambridge where we were uh, trained to be instructors. And I was an instructor for 17 years with the University of Maryland. I taught all over the Eastern Shore, over in Delaware, Eastern Shore of Virginia, uh, uh, Aberdeen Proving Grounds up there. And I taught a lot of classes over at the university, especially with uh, breathing apparatus. That was, seemed like my, was my forte, so to speak. We used to go, well, we still go to the Farmers Convention in Ocean City, not as many or not all of us like we used to, but we used to stay at 7th and Boardwalk at the Majestic Hotel, and that was owned by Mr. and Mrs. Savage. Two members of the company, one is deceased now, the other one has moved out of the area, went fishing one night off the Ocean City Pier. They caught about a three-foot sand shark. They wrapped it up in a towel or blanket and brought it back to the hotel and turned it loose in the swimming pool. You should have seen the women the next morning when they were going down with the kids to get in the pool to go swimming. It, <laughs> that was really funny.
to members past and present. Thank you for your service.